How's everything? Good, good. Thanks for coming by. Uh, thanks for having me. It's a great new office. Yeah, it's cute. It's a good spot. Um, so just to sort of provide context in terms of your backstory, obviously you have a very unique beginning in the business and you started on the agent side. I did. Correct. I feel like there aren't very many people who do casting who have been on the agent side or vice versa, many agents who have been on the casting side. So mm -hmm. um, probably one of the few who has spent an extensive amount of time doing both. And when did you end up moving over to Vogue? Um, it's, uh, it'll be five years this coming October. Five years? Yeah. Wow, time flies. Time has flown by. I imagine the magazine itself has changed quite a bit since you arrived versus now. Um, I think the world changed quite a bit mm -hmm. since I arrived, and I don't think any changes that we've experienced have really taken place in a vacuum. Um, I think it's been a time of uh, quite a bit of disruption in, in our industry, the modeling industry, technology, publishing, and um, with that, you know, we, we've evolved as everyone else has. Would you say that it's important for a talent to now have a story and that the days where they're able to simply be a face or a body are kind of behind us? Um, I think that being simply a face or a body will limit one's career. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as we look to create more and more talent, uh, more and more content, all of us in, in um, you know, again, on different platforms, uh, it would significantly hold someone back if they can't offer more than just uh, maybe to be a print model. Um, it would be it will be so limiting that at some point in time I'm not sure that that type of model will continue to exist. You mentioned earlier about the branded content and different aspects of that process that you're involved in as a part of the talent group. Can you talk a little bit more about what that process looks like on your guys' side? Um, sure. 23 stories at Condé Nast, um, mm -hmm. as well as Condé Nast brands individually. Um, do branded content mm -hmm. and um, casting models for that is, is very exciting. We um, are usually doing video, so we're normally looking for someone with a story. Sometimes we're looking for traditional fashion models, sometimes um, we're looking for a woman that really embodies a brand uh, that is not someone that's re represented by a traditional agency. And we, um, we're, we're finding people who have perhaps never modeled before or that we wouldn't otherwise have worked with. So. Mm -hmm. um, at the time that I went to um, work at Vogue and started to do casting, someone in, in the industry had said to me, are you sure you want to go and do this at a time that models have become so irrelevant? Um, which I think we forget had somewhat been the case four or five years ago, the last model who everyone knew by name was maybe Giselle. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that in this time, we've gone back very rapidly to a moment where models are relevant. Mm -hmm. We do know their names. They are perhaps more widely known than maybe even models were um, in the last generation where we actually had superstars. So um, the entire process kind of changed uh, in my time and that's been wonderful. Um, models have more of a voice than they've ever had before. They have more of a control over their own image than they've ever had before. They have a possibility to create content on their own, which would have been unthought of previously. So the entire casting process really evolved with that. Which aspects do you think uh, occur in talent management today that differ from when you were on that side of things? I think talent management has become uh, much more exciting again. I think that, uh, again, the ability to create content with uh, one's talent was not necessarily something that was very common before. I think uh, models also have um, more of a voice than they've ever had before and more of a possibility to evolve their careers beyond just modeling. Um, I, I actually sometimes envy people who uh, have the opportunity to be an, an agent now. I think the space is much more exciting than just negotiating uh, projects on a case-by-case -case basis. Do you think cause has become a really important aspect of that conversation in terms of the talent and how they exist in the larger conversation? Um, I think that uh, we very often look at models and wonder, okay, what else are they doing? What um, are they activists? Is there something they're passionate about? Uh, models have a lot of opportunity to uh, affect change in the world. Either they meet people uh, during the course of their work that they um, can partner with to, to work on uh, projects, or they, um, um, they have a reach through their social media or other platforms to uh, garner attention for causes they care about. So I think if a model is not, after some point in time, doing that, you almost have to wonder, you know, are they not passionate about anything or do they you know, not want to give back to their community? And obviously a, a 
conversation that never runs dry is the subject of diversity. And I think that you know you have two different sides of that conversation, where some people feel as though a lot of progress have been made, has been made, uh, and others feel as though we're still living in the age of tokenism. What are your feelings on on that sort of progress that we've seen in the industry? Um, I feel that we cast the the best model for um, for any given project. I think that we've been uh, very big champions of diversity, mm -hmm. and um, I don't necessarily think that's a result of you know tokenism. There are just a lot of great talents, and uh, we're very inspired by them. And I think I've seen a very positive change. Do you personally feel as though? Um, the conversation surrounding identity politics has been one that Vogue has really embraced, just in terms of anything from the trans community to non-binary. I know we've talked about a number of these things together before. You guys uh, celebrated Andrea Pajic following her transition. I know you've been um, incredibly progressive in a way that perhaps not everybody would necessarily have expected from Vogue so early on in that conversation. Do you find that's coming up? more frequently at, at the magazine? or um, In terms of models, um, a, again, we did a really great piece with Andrea. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe we've worked with other models who are also non-gender binary or conforming. Um, again, that's not necessarily you know, as a decision to just feature them because of that fact, but because we thought they were great and more mm -hmm. inspired by them. And um, they fit uh, in, in the pieces where we worked with them. I love that. I, I think that goes back to the question of whether or not it's true diversity versus tokenism and the idea that you guys are very much interested in the individual narrative rather than which card they represent in, in the kind of hand being played and I think that's probably one of the number one things that keeps Vogue at the forefront of the conversation that way. Great answer. And do you guys find yourselves talking a lot about the generational sort of gaps or what Gen Z and Millennials are interested in versus existing consumers or any of that kind of fun, trendy vocabulary? Uh, not necessarily, but when it comes to casting, I, I do think a lot about age and I, I expect, but I haven't seen this yet, I do think that the age at which people start to model is going to change. As the model is no longer going to, in my opinion, be just a genetically qualified young person and we're more likely to find models who are people with other talents, I think that people will come to modeling in an, at an older age or at not just exclusively a young one. Um, and I think that'll be a very interesting thing because there, there has been kind of a, a gap in the age of, of models. Models are relatively young even when, when they're well over 18. Um, and I, I'm really excited to see that change. I'm curious when it'll come. And do you think that the industry environment that exists today is, um, for lack of a better term, a safer place than it once was because of these processes we're talking about, the digital aspect of things, the transparency required, and, and all of those different new changes? Or do you think it's? Um, I think the fact that models have a voice um, mm -hmm. and they are less um, interchangeable than they were before they kind of started to become stars again. Uh, and the fact that some of them have become brand names uh, who must be treated with the respect that well, all people deserve, but they definitely deserve. They're not necessarily someone that um, can be mistreated and, and go away, or they're not necessarily someone that can be easily replaced. Um, I do think that's causing some shifts um, for the better uh, in the industry. I love that. And as someone who's been on both sides of the coin, do you feel as though there are any things that agencies aren't necessarily doing that they could that would improve um, the way they can support talent in our industry? So I'm not currently in the, in the agency space. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily doing that in my day to day. Um, most of the agencies I speak to um, have shared that they've started to implement some very progressive um, projects to make their models safer. Either mm -hmm. they're educating models about what is or isn't acceptable behavior, or they've started to put in place um, contracts when working with test photographers, or they've changed their testing process. So people have different things that they're starting to do, um, but almost everyone I've spoken to has um, made a concerted effort to ensure their, their model safety. Have you felt as though you're encountering any sort of new limitations as a result of having that rule on age? Um, I've absolutely not found this change limiting in any way. Most of the great talents um, are over 18. And um, in fact, a lot of the, the best talents are quite a bit older 
And I think that as things have changed uh, in our industry and what a model is has changed, uh, and there are now people who are models who perhaps had other talents and fell into modeling or um, came to modeling via less traditional route, I think we'll see more and more talents that are starting to model at quite a bit of an older age. Um, so definitely not limiting, um, in fact, quite inspiring. Um, and I hope this is uh, industry-wide shift. Hopefully they will start to look to older models or this might make it easier for an agency to say, we actually don't want to start our models too young. They will be limited in their ability to work for these great publications and editorial. Why don't we wait a little while until they, they start a show? So I think there are many different people who will have to make these decisions uh, individually uh, and hopefully the industry would simply shift that way. We agree. Great. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come tonight. Thank you for having me. It's a great conversation. Definitely. Thanks. Hey guys, this is Jeremy McLean from Ford Models. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more, click here. And if you want to subscribe, click here.